This video contains unsettling content, violent content, jump scares, pop-ups, and sudden loud noises. Viewer discretion advised. Most people try to avoid dying in video games because we hate the bitter taste of failure. Here, you'll see a few death scenes that you'll not only never want to see, but ones that are also startling and frightening. The moments before your character takes their final breath stay with your memory and add another reason to survive for as long as you can. Prepare yourself for oblivion as we go through the top 30 scariest game overs in games. Solstice. As Shadax the Wizard, you must traverse a large network of puzzling rooms in order to assemble the six pieces of the Staff of Demnos, all to save Princess Eleanor from being sacrificed by Morbius the Malevolent during the Winter Solstice. But as you venture through Castle Rock, it becomes clear that this is a race against time, as Morbius's minions are also scouring the castle in search of the only weapon that can defeat him. It's a difficult task to weave between blobs, trolls, ghosts, and other beasts, as well as navigate around traps and pitfalls, usually leading down to a spike trap below. A single hit to Shadax and the mage will let out a scream of pain and terror as he begins to disintegrate, leaving behind only his robes and hat. Perhaps most upsetting is learning just how far you traveled in your quest and how close you were to achieving 100% completion, as well as saving the world from the evil Baron of Darkness. Robinson's Requiem an adventure simulation with a medical twist, Robinson's Requiem requires you to make your way through a strange alien world while doing your best to stay alive and survive the harsh environment. You are tasked with healing wounds and medicating yourself, as well as staving off hunger, thirst, and infection. However, if you mess up your treatment, you are immediately informed of your mistake, with green lettering somberly detailing your cause of death. There's a lot of ways to face your demise, including gangrene poisoning, syncope, cyanide poisoning, tachycardia, and violent traumatization. Then, the screen will suddenly go black after your character reacts vocally to whatever has just occurred. Soon after this, the scene changes, faced with an image of a man's face, half melted in flames, with skulls behind him laughing in the fire. It's hard not to be a little unnerved by this game's offerings. This is only worsened by the haunting dirge that plays over the top of this site, a deep melody that continues on for what seems like forever before finally allowing you to return to the game. I mean, I guess the only real upside to all of this is that the flames of hell have to be warmer than the harsh alien winter, right? Nice. 3D Monster Maze It's hard to make a convincingly scary game in 1982 and 3D Monster Maze with its pixelated and somewhat adorable T-Rex villain would have been hard pressed to create something even remotely designed to scare. However, sometimes there can be happy little accidents that lead us being lumped with a death scene that seems designed to have children waking up their parents in the middle of the night, terrified. While the unnamed protagonist of the game wanders through the black and white pixel maze, text will appear at the base of the screen, saying only, Footsteps approaching. If you continue on your path out of nowhere, a huge pixel T-Rex will appear. Initially, he looks kind of cute, but as he gets closer, his eyes turn into white orbs and his teeth begin to show. The final screen before you die is simply the gaping maw of the beast, his eyes intensely staring you down until his mouth engulfs you completely. But hey, at least you get points awarded posthumously, right? Even if you are destined to live out your eternal life trapped in a maze with a giant dinosaur. Fear Effect What separates Fear Effect from most other titles in this list is not only the specialized death scenes, but the fact that there are three playable protagonists they happen to. And boy, when they die, they're given the full treatment. And can be shown being shot to bits, fried by electricity, complete with the eyes rolling back in their sockets, falling from great heights, being blown up, eaten by an underwater beast, and being reduced to slime. It gets pretty unnerving after a while and really makes the point that you should be trying harder to survive. Isle of the Dead 
Continuing in the theme of 1990s point-and-click video games comes Isle of the Dead. Released in 1993, this game provides the player with the Moreau-esque setting of an island full of zombies under the control of a mad scientist. You're tasked with surviving the horrors of the island and making your way out alive. However, even with its dubious graphics and somewhat corny dialogue, it does provide some fairly gruesome death scenes for the protagonist to suffer through. Some possibilities include watching your face being mauled by a bat, falling into a lake of acid, then emerging for a split second as a skeleton reaching for safety, and backfiring a gun which will blow your head clean off. Perhaps the most ugly is when you're being tased by a nurse, and then promptly have your neck snapped by the brawn of the operation. If you happen to quit the game, you're gifted the privilege of the protagonist blowing his brains out with a shotgun. Well, this didn't receive rave reviews, Island of the Dead certainly did manage to do one thing, and that was to give us some especially gory player terminations for this list. <laughs> Uninvited. While it may not be the most visually compelling by modern standards, Uninvited focuses on telling a strong story through a text-based adventure with enough pictures to complement. The horror here is in the details read by the player as they make decisions that ultimately cost them their lives. Eat the wrong fruit and you'll age a year a minute until you're blown away by the wind. Pick up a red ruby and you'll be possessed over time to become a fixture of the house. Tap the wrong lady on the shoulder and you'll be torn apart by the horrific skeleton she really is. Most hazards are easily avoided if you use common sense. Don't hit dogs, don't fool around with axes or knives, don't waste time in a burning car, and when you are warned to not go into the basement where the giant spider lurks, probably best you don't go down there. Super Mario 64, Drowning. Super Mario 64 was the ultimate in childhood gaming, full of nostalgia and some of the coolest gameplay we've ever seen from Nintendo. It was a fantastic game and holds some of the fondest memories that some of us have made with our consoles. However, this bright and upbeat masterpiece has a dark side. And no, I'm not talking about having to share the controller with a sibling. The underwater levels were already often hard enough, and it was easy enough to slip up and lose your power. Every time this happened, however, you were treated with a rather unsettling death scene. Mario, quite adept at deep sea diving for someone with no equipment in a completely unrelated career, does fairly well underwater, but as he starts to flag, an intense beeping begins. This is closely followed by Mario desperately clutching at his throat and sinking to the bottom of the sea, choking noises emitting from his mouth as water fills his lungs and he dies. All with the charming sound of the sweet water music behind it. Well, that's one way to serious childhood trauma. Fallout 2. It's a harsh world out there in the wasteland, and it's populated with all manner of monsters and hostiles that will tear you apart in order to survive, or maybe for a little fun. As the Chosen One, it is your duty to face them in order to save your town from its terminal drought and find the legendary Gek that will help terraform the land. But falling at the hands of your enemies here means the death for the world. Being shot, set on fire, blown up, and cut in half is disgusting enough. But then you're treated to an unnerving image of your skeleton laying in the expanse. A somber voice explains in various ways that you have doomed the wasteland to destruction. That your failure to obtain the Gek and stop the Enclave from subjugating all the survivors of the nuclear apocalypse has led to the extinction of all life. Death is bad, but knowing that you are responsible for the true end of all life on Earth leaves a bitter, depressing taste in your mouth. Your life ends in the wasteland. System Shock Stopping the malevolent AI Shodan from carrying out her schemes is no easy task. As the hacker, you'll be running up and down the decks of the space station Citadel, always trying to stay one step ahead of her next evil plan. And of course, you'll more than likely run into her large array of mutant cyborg and robot cohorts, a veritable army at her disposal, not to mention the various environmental hazards dotted around the station. No matter who or what you succumb to, your fate is always the same. The hacker will be taken to a resurrection machine, which Shodan had reprogrammed to suit her own purposes. He will be placed inside and converted into one of the most horrific enemies featured, a Cortex Reaver. You'll see several examples of it in the game, 
a four-legged automaton fitted over the head of a human victim, cut in half at the waist, dangling imply underneath. It's the kind of end where we'd rather prefer to simply die. Time Splitters 2 It's easy to get caught up in the fast-paced, action-packed world of Time Splitters 2. Sometimes you forget that this is not the real world, so when you're ambushed and worn down to death, the shock is often very impactful. Your character of choice will collapse in a heap, and a loud electronic drone will pierce the air as the screen fades to red, proving to be a very frightening combination. Time Splitters proves that immersion is all you need to leave an impression on the player. Even if that impression is fear. Mirror's Edge. It's all part of the risks of the job. Being a courier in the world of Mirror's Edge means you'll be performing some sweet parkour off city skyscrapers, putting you one false step between you and certain death. Lose your footing, and if the fear of the fall doesn't kill you first, the sudden stop will. Acrophobia sufferers will certainly not have a fun time of what is essentially a falling simulator that accurately shows you the final moments of life soon to end thanks to gravity. The drop is unnerving already as it is, but the sudden cut to black and sound cutout at the end to simulate death just adds another element to its finality. Metal Gear Solid 4, Guns of Patriots. War is hell, and when you've seen the kinds of horrors Solid Snake has in his lifetime, you'd be scared too. As a sufferer of PTSD from decades of witnessing atrocities unspeakable in any civilized society, Snake is weighed down with guilt and a sense of purpose. He must succeed in his mission, no matter the cost. Should he die, his blood-curdling scream pierces the air as he drops to the ground lifeless. Flashes of his few allies, enemies, and details of his mission flash before his eyes, building into a cacophony of realization that he has failed. Stranger still is that if you keep a careful eye on his corpse, you may catch a glimpse of string strands holding him from above, hinting at an unseen force leading him to his ultimate demise. Limbo Limbo is a beautiful game. With its atmospheric artwork and sound design, it makes for an eerie atmosphere, and the in-game deaths are no exception. Being a puzzle game with no hints or tips, largely based on trial and error, it's almost certain that somewhere along the way you're going to die. When you do, you'll be faced with one of many grisly scenes, depending on the type of horrific end the boy is facing. Some of the possibilities include being decapitated in bear traps, being crushed by boulders, being impaled by giant spiders, being shot by shadowy figures, and being sliced in half by a buzzsaw. What makes the death scene so visceral is the blatant disregard the world shows for the protagonist, and the deathly silence every time he meets his fate. It's not like it's only once either. Death will tend to happen again and again in this game, to the point of it being ad nauseum. It's the kind of game where there's so many dumb ways to die, and you're the lucky player who gets to experience all of them. Brain Dead 13 you could be forgiven for thinking that Brain Dead 13 was going to be a cute game. With its 1990s animation style and adorably designed characters, it certainly looks like it can't be all that violent. However, behind this lies an air of campy menace that still holds much of its shock value, and charming essence that doesn't quite let you realize just how bad the death scene was until you think about it later. Lance, the main character, doesn't exactly have the best of times as he's chased around the castle by Fritz, the Igor to Dr. Neuro Neurosis Victor Frankenstein. He can be sliced up by hand hooks, be beheaded by the chef and end up with his head upside down, have his head stuffed into a blender, which is then sipped by Fritz, and even dig his own grave. Some of the particularly creepy ones, though, are a little more unsettling such as Fritz ripping off Lance's skin by hooking his eyeballs and having the front of his face sliced off by a vengeful ghost. 
All of this occurs with the cheery, cartoonish soundtrack playing and the exaggerated sounds of all the characters cackling, laughing, and screaming. The eeriest thing about Braindead 13's death scenes is how comedic they seem until you start to think about them on a deeper level. Metroid Prime 2 Nintendo can be surprisingly harrowing when it comes to the death scenes in their games. For a family-friendly company, occasionally something in a game appears and it's hard to fathom exactly how many children it's destined to traumatize. Metroid Prime 2, Willis aimed at an older audience, provides us with an example of this in its termination scenes. As she powers down, Samus's visor shuts off. When this happens, you're thrust into a readout display and faced with a gunmetal grey status screen. A rapid beeping can be heard along with Samus' labored breathing, and warning flashes on the screen next to a picture of her face. Quickly it turns red and her face shifts to a beating heart shown in her chest as the word System Alert appear. This changes to the heart getting bigger and the word Failure materializes, only to be zoomed in on to ensure that you know exactly what you are. Slowly it fades out, leaving only the words Mission Failure on the screen and a Continue button underneath. While disconcerting, it also feels designed to cause enough shame in the player to make them slink off and leave the game alone for a while, and think about how much of a failure they are. Waxworks A dungeon crawler made by... Horsoft, go figure. Waxworks has the protagonist traveling between time periods to save his brother and ancestors from an ancient curse. Perilous mazes await and within lay creatures and traps of many kinds. Fall into any of them and a depiction of the protagonist is shown suffering various mutilations at the hands of crocodiles, zombies, snakes, and even knife-wielding maniacs. Each time period has its own themed deaths and you're even able to be hung at the gallows in Victorian London believed to be Jack the Ripper. These deaths range from tame scratches and bites to outright disembowelment and decapitation. The variety keeps each stage interesting, so long as you can stomach the results of your failure. Tomb Raider 2013 When it comes to visceral games, Tomb Raider's origin games certainly takes the cake. They are bloody, violent, and certainly memorable. Seeing Laura being stabbed with axes, shot with arrows, strangled, neck slit, and shot in the face is bad enough, but it's other forces and environmental factors that bring the most carnage. Laura is crushed by boulders, has her neck snapped by wolves, impelled through the neck, and still scrambling to get it out, driven through a tree branch, and smashed into rocks by the ocean's current. She already takes a beating without outright dying, so if you're a fan of self-flagellation, this game is right up your alley. The Last of Us Of course zombies are going to make it on this list since they're not exactly known for the cleanest of kills. The infected of The Last of Us is no exception to this rule. Sure, you can get your typical execution scenes from scroungers and other survivors punching and shooting you, but the real scare comes from when the main antagonists get you. Once you see those clickers tearing a huge chunk out of your neck, juicy tendons being torn from your flesh, the image never seems to go away. Or having your face torn wide open by a bloater, that's plenty fun. Worse still is when it happens to Ellie, and even then the thought that Joel won't be around to protect her anymore adds another layer of fear to the already terrifying ordeal. Haunting Ground The most immediate thing you'll be made aware of in this game is that Fiona is a physically weak person, and constantly afraid, which is why her trusty canine pal Huey is on call for the offensive but the castle they are trapped in is full of unspeakable horrors. The enemies you face have individual forms of execution. Debilita's bear hugs Fiona and crushes her spine. Daniela impels her with a sharp poker. Ricardo knocks Fiona to the floor, stands over her as she desperately tries to crawl away, and shoots her point blank in the back of the head. This is not even beginning to mention other death cutscenes, where Fiona is peppered by nails, sliced apart inside an Iron Maiden, smothered inside out by deadly beetles, and crushed on a conveyor. Resident Evil 6 There are a lot of ways to die in Resident Evil 6, 
and quite a few characters to experience it with. How you encounter them can vary too, with some deaths being a result of a failed quick time event, often resulting in drowning, burning, or falling into an abyss. The real gruesome terminations are as a result of being attacked by the zombies. You can get crushed between the pincers of the Glavismech, impaled, sliced, diced, crushed, torn apart. Not to mention the bosses and how they can rip you to shreds. There really is no mercy found here, but if you want to find every way that you can die, be my guest. Doom 2016 You may be the biggest badass ever to shoot your way through hell, but a few of the corpses paving the way probably belong to you as well. Doom Guy gets the ultimate beating every time he's close to death, with each enemy type able to end your life in multiple execution styles. Watching yourself get disemboweled, impaled, crushed, set on fire, sliced, diced, decapitated, and dismembered really highlights the horrors that hell can throw at you. Although in this case of death by lava, you may find some amusement. Dead Space 2 The entirety of Dead Space 2 is terrifying in one way or another. From zombie bat people to necromorphs that will hunt you down, sprinting their way down the halls after you. While you can try your best not to die, death will almost inevitably catch up with you, whether you like it or not. This game has an endless series of methods to violently murder Isaac in the most nightmarish way possible, including but not limited to being stabbed in the face with weapons, being jumped by zombie kids, being blasted by explosions, and being sucked into the dark vacuum of space. There seems to be no end to the terrifying ways that this game can end your life. The crowning glory, however, is the Needle Death. Often lauded as the ultimate death scene in a horror game, it's sure to turn your stomach. After Isaac climbs into an MRI machine, you are tasked with guiding a needle into his eye. But if you're off the mark, you'll be greeted with the grisly sight of his eye socket being gored as the needle drills past his eyeball and into his brain. It's certainly enough to put you off playing for a little while and maybe enough to put you off that laser eye surgery just a little bit longer. Hong Kong 97 Made to mock the gaming industry, Hong Kong 97 is disturbing in content on its own. Featuring a caricature of Jackie Chan, known as Chin, he mercilessly slaughters immigrants arriving in Hong Kong as the recent influx is due to the transfer of Chinese sovereignty, increasing the crime rate. This is bad enough, but if Chin is killed by the police or obstacles, a game over screen will flash up depicting a real human corpse, which also appears wherever an enemy is slain in-game. It is not known for sure who this person is, as it has never been officially stated by the developers. But some speculate that it could have been the Polish boxer Leszek Blazinski, who apparently killed himself on the same date shown, timestamped on the picture. However, officially, the identity of the dead man remains a rather sick mystery. Phantasmagoria one of those 1990s point-and-click adventure titles with the kitschy real-world graphics and a predilection to violence, both physical and sexual, Phantasmagoria was always destined to draw controversy. The game contains a huge amount of gore and shock value to the point it was censored in some areas and was completely banned in other places, whilst all the death scenes are vicious in one way or another. A particular standout is a demon shoving its claws into the eyes of Adrienne and tearing her face in half letting blood and brain spill into the center of the screen. Other deaths include a rather sedated strangulation, compared with the other options, and having her head sliced open by a pendulum. Even when she's not dying, Adrienne is facing one form of dire peril after another. 
hence the game's controversial rape scene. While the death scenes can be repeated, one wrong move or wrong piece of dialogue will have you staring at the screen again, stomach lurching. The budget for the game was well into the millions, so it's no surprise that they pulled out some of the best effects of the time to provide the player with some particularly sickening material. The death scenes in Phantasmagoria are some of the most explicit in gaming, and for a 1995 point and click, that's certainly a badge of honor. Five Nights at Freddy's 3 Five Nights at Freddy's was an overnight sensation in the indie game world with a simple formula. It focused on the use of jump scares and the building of tension to deliver the promised horror atmosphere. The game doesn't so much focus on playing, but rather on surviving. With Five Nights at Freddy's 3, however, the player is faced with a lot more bang for their buck in terms of the scares, and who can blame it? With the game now being set in an amusement park dedicated to the sick urban legend of the original pizza shop, there's a lot of room to move with the creepiness. There's no longer just normal cute versions of the animatronics. They are all shells of their former selves, phantoms in the theme park. The animatronic monsters are now much worse for wear and now have jerky movements every time they make their way toward you. From the shadows out lurks a motley crew of creatures, including Freddy himself, Chica, Bonnie, and Foxy. Perhaps the most eerie addition is the use of children's voices when the characters are about to pounce on you. Also, when you die, it's not always a permanent state. You may be greeted with a secondary jump scare just to make those heart palpitations all the worse. Honestly, you'd be better off playing something else and ordering some pizza. Soma Soma is not a game for the faint-hearted. With its exploration of AI consciousness and its clawing underwater atmosphere, not to mention the terrifying monsters lurking around every corner, it's a game you do best to avoid dying in. However, sometimes this isn't possible, especially as the puzzles in the game can be quite complex and may confuse the player for extended periods of time. The worst part? You have no way of fighting back and must make your way through Pathos 2 using stealth, your wits, and gathering of clues. Should you be unlucky enough to meet your demise, you will be greeted with a series of disconcerting images and sounds. The screen turns like a falling camera, and then lines of binary text and coding flash up, amongst images of creatures that look somewhat human, but also eerily other. The images progressively get worse, as you slide from a fairly normal looking young lady to a demonic creature with clawed fingers and black blood surrounding its mouth. Finally, once you have witnessed a rapid series of these horrors and jump scares, the screen turns white, then goes black, and text appears simply saying you died. In a way, the text at the end is a relief. Nobody would want to continue to live after facing those images. Darkness was adapted from the comic books. This came with high hopes for preserving the gritty and gory world that the books brought to life. Fans were on tenterhooks, and most were not disappointed. When you've got tendrils that ram their way down people's throats and strangle the life from them, it's hard to not expect some riveting death scenes when you die yourself. Whenever Jackie dies, he gets to witness the horror of exactly who or what he's become. Images of people you've met or plan to meet, or places you've been or yet to go to fill the screen, with their eyes and mouths pitted out, their mouths turned into gaping worm-like maws, or their entire faces hollowed out beyond recognition. Once you glimpse them, they will tell Jackie the reality of the situation. He can never die. Not really. Some things are worse than death though, and these shadow monsters fit that bill perfectly. Fortunately, you're not stuck with them forever, and soon have the sound of your body reassembling itself fill your ears before you resume the game. Although the entirety of the game is full of horrors like this, there's something particularly eerie about death scenes, so it's best you try your hardest to avoid them. Spooky's Jump Scare Mansion. The clue is in the name. The assortment of creatures that roam the halls and grounds of the mansion each have their own unique death animation. These range from being eaten alive, having a needle put through your eye, being possessed, and even dragged to an otherworldly lair where you will inevitably meet your demise. 
It's these personalized deaths for each enemy that makes you want to avoid them all the more. Since each one may become scarier than the last. SCP Containment Breach These are probably some of the more unnerving death scenes on this list, all stylized around the SCP Foundation subjects from the popular website. As a D-Class, you can be terminated by staff before the breach for non-compliance, but coming up against the individual SCPs is a whole new kind of nope. 173 will constantly stalk you and only move when out of view or when you blink, snapping your neck on contact. Continuously staring at 012 will cause you to dig out your wrist veins and attempt to finish the bloody composition, all while rambling insanely. 939 will lure you in with human voices before viciously attacking you. You can even be killed by a particularly malicious vending machine. Going through the whole list would take far too much time, so we encourage you to play this game to experience them for yourselves. If you dare. Slender Fortress 2 Although this game was made for satirical purposes, it has to be noted how creepily the enemies chase after you and end your life. Each boss is themed around their natural abilities, or in some cases, they are given new abilities such as teleportation, super speed, or blinding their victims. The most horrific aspect of how they kill you is when they're chasing after you, their calls echoing down the passageways and planes of the map, and you can feel them right on your feet. You better run fast, or they'll catch you and kill you with a horrible cry of triumph, and a scene reminiscent of the slender death animation will ultimately follow. Did you enjoy the video? Why not click the bell icon and subscribe to see more content from us at tats.videos. And now let's see the creators of this video. Thank you.